welcome all to work energy and power class 3 in which we'll discuss about work energy theorem so this work energy theorem states that work done by all the forces is equal to change in kinetic energy that means work done by all the forces all the forces means it may be a work done by conservative force or it may be a work done by non conservative force or any other kind of forces so we can say that work done by all the forces acting on the object is equal to nothing but change in kinetic energy now this work done by all can be written as work done by conservative force plus work done by non conservative force is equal to change in kinetic energy so whenever we are using this work energy theorem either we should use this equation that is work done by all is equal to change in kinetic energy or if you are separately considering the work done by conservative force or work done by non conservative force then we should write work done by conservative plus work done by non conservative is equal to change in kinetic energy or we can say that this work done by non conservative force is equal to change in kinetic energy minus work done by conservative force and we know that negative of work done by a conservative force is equal to change in potential energy so if you are considering only non conservative force then we'll write this is equal to change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy so in a question if you are considering potential energy and kinetic energy then you should not consider the work done by conservative force because negative of work done by conservative force is nothing but change in potential energy so we'll write this work energy theorem like this that is work done by non conservative force is equal to change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy so just uh, remember this thing work energy theorem states that work done by all the forces is equal to change in kinetic energy of system that means work done by conservative force and work done by non conservative force is equal to change in kinetic energy just so to understand this concept we'll just uh, consider a small example assume that an object of mass m is dropped from a particular height h so after traveling a distance h in downward direction this object will attain a particular velocity let's say that is equal to p assume that when it is dropped its initial velocity is equal to 0 so initial velocity of this object was 0 now its velocity becomes equal to v and our aim is to find out what about the value of its velocity at this instant so in this question if you are using work energy theorem either you can do it like this we can write work done by all the forces is equal to change in kinetic energy if you are using this equation then we will find out what are the forces acting on this object one force acting on this object is nothing but weight of this object mg gravity is exerting a force mg in downward direction and assume that no other forces are acting on the object so work done by this force we can take it as m into g into this displaced by distance h so work done by this gravity is mgh is equal to change in kinetic energy that we can take it as kinetic energy final that is half into m into v square minus kinetic energy initial which was zero so you can write the value of m into g into h is equal to half into m into v square got it from this if you want we can find out the value of velocity and other things now let's say if we are using uh, this equation in another form that means if you are using this format that is work done by non conservative is equal to change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy so we can say that over here work done by non conservative force gravitational force is a conservative force and other forces are not acting so work done by non conservative is equal to zero so we can write zero is equal to change in kinetic energy that is half into m into v square minus initial kinetic energy zero plus change in potential energy just for the calculation of potential energy if i am taking this as a reference line so its final potential energy is with respect to reference line it is minus m into g into h and initial potential energy is zero 
So we can write this 0 is equal to half into m into v square minus m into g into h or again we can write the value of mgh is equal to half into m into v square. So just remember how we are using this equation depends upon the situation either either we are using this equation that is work done by all is equal to change in kinetic energy yeah work done by non-conservative force is equal to change in kinetic energy plus potential energy. So as we discussed that work done by non-conservative force is equal to change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy and if the work done by non-conservative force is equal to zero like the frictional force etc are not acting on the object all the forces are conservative forces then we can write zero is equal to change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy or you can write it as this zero is equal to change in kinetic energy means kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial plus change in potential energy means potential energy final minus potential energy initial or you can write it as this kinetic energy initial I am just writing it on left side then it becomes positive plus potential energy initial is equal to kinetic energy final plus potential energy final or you can say that if non-conservative forces are not acting on the system then its initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy is equal to final kinetic energy plus final potential energy and the sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy is known as nothing but mechanical energy. So even we can write initial mechanical energy is equal to final mechanical energy. So we'll say that the mechanical energy of system that means the sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy of system will remain constant if non-conservative forces are not acting on the system. So which is known as law of conservation of energy or law of conservation of mechanical energy. So law of conservation of mechanical energy states that if non-conservative forces are not acting on the object, total mechanical energy of system will remain constant. So just now we discussed an example. Same example we can uh, solve it by using conservation of mechanical energy also. Like over here non-conservative forces are not acting on the system. An object is dropped from a particular height let's say h and our aim is to find out what about the value of velocity of object after traveling by a distance h. So as non-conservative forces are not acting on the system even we can use conservation of mechanical energy over here that means we can write mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final or you can write the value of uh, potential energy at point 0.1 plus kinetic energy at point 0.1 is equal to potential energy at point 2 plus kinetic energy at point 2. I am just taking this as r point 1 and this is r point 2. So you can write potential energy if I am taking first one first point as a reference line for the measurement of gravitational potential energy. So you can write potential energy initial is equal to 0 and kinetic energy initial is also equal to zero as velocity is equal to zero and potential energy final with respect to reference line it travel a distance h in downward direction so potential energy is minus mgh and kinetic energy is half into m into v square so again we can write the value of mgh is equal to half into m into v square and from this relation we can find out the value of velocity so for solving question you can use any of these equations like either you can write work done by all the forces is equal to change in kinetic energy or you can write work done by conservative force plus work done by non-conservative force is equal to change in kinetic energy or you can write work done by non-conservative force is equal to change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy or if non-conservative forces are not acting on the system then we can write the total mechanical energy initial is equal to total mechanical energy final. Hope so that you understood whatever the things we discussed in this class. If you are having any doubt, please contact. Thank you.